everyone, it's Amber Love, and I'm somewhat back. I have been having tons and tons of computer problems, so I really hope that everything is working out with this particular episode. Um, today I would like to talk to you about Dark Horses the Guild, issue number two. I have interviewed both Felicia Day and Jim Rugg in written uh, interviews, so you can check those out at some of my other links. The Felicia Day interview was done for Dynamic Forces, and Jim Rugg is over at the Girls Entertainment Network. So uh, please go check those out. Uh, these, this is a great teaming, absolute wonderful, wonderful teaming of these two creators. Uh, you know, Felicia Day, we know, has just been so instrumental in building a web presence with the Guild and Dr. Horrible's Sing Along blog, so she's just a wonderful girl geek, and, you know, she's, you know, absolutely deserves every award that she gets. Jim Rugg does some really exciting independent comics, and I urge you to please go check out his other work as well like Street Angel and Aphrodisiac. I mean, they're, they're, every single thing it has its own little flavor and texture to it. It's all very different. So here in the Guild issue 2, we are getting introduced to these characters that we know and love from the show, and Vork in particular makes a real um, sort of, I don't know, a real mark, at least with me anyway. He, uh, of course, refers to maintaining his in-game blackmail list on a spreadsheet, which is just so Vork. My favorite quote is that uh, he won't take any healing herbs from Codex because patchouli is a gateway herb. And it's like, oh, it's just perfect. You know, the, the voices of the actors come through. The illustrations of them is just wonderful. Clara is there, and you can just hear that bubbly crispness to her voice. It's just, it's so wonderful. And Zabu and his mother, oh, you know, of course, you got to love Zabu's mother. She's awesome. So Sid's relationship is, uh, we're getting deeper and deeper into it, we're, we're really seeing what this is like. This guy Trevor that she's with is a complete D-bag, and you know, he's definitely the kind of person everybody's going to love to hate, uh, clearly by the end of the issue uh, as well. He just neglects her so much. You know, she's doing all of this work for his band, she's getting none of the credit, she's putting up with him, and you just want to shake her and go, what is wrong with you? So. Now that she's introduced to this video game, she's spending uh, more time there. She's gaining some confidence standing up for herself. The sleepless nights that we all know, anybody who's done an RPG knows the sleepless nights. And, you know, she realizes, you know what, screw him. She doesn't need to, to put up with uh, spending all those hours writing his music for him. Instead, she's going to go game and do something for herself. And her, ther her therapist becomes very concerned about this. So if you remember episode one, where Sid's talking about her sessions with her therapist and how she kind of feels like she's a lost cause, well, here we actually get a look at the therapy sessions where the game discussions have begun. The therapist feels that, of course, an in-game life is just absolutely, uh, you know, wrong, that it's an escape into a fantasy world, and uh, it only causes antisocial behavior. But what we see is that Sid's got this codex persona, and she's being very social. She's meeting, you know, Vork and Clara and, uh, you know, Blades, everybody we know. And she's learning about the, the mead hall parties that go on after a quest. She's learning about being a good teammate and healing other people. So, you know, yeah, she's a noob still, but she's, you know, excited about it. And it gives her something to look forward to when she goes home and has time alone. So I don't really think that it's a bad thing like her therapist. That's a whole big argument there. I'm sure you guys could just like have a field day in the comments about, you know, whether uh, where the line is that there's too much time spent in game. Um, you know, which hey, it's, you know, might be a fun argument. I don't know. Might get out of hand though. Uh, so, y you know, when it comes to Trevor, uh, again, he, you just hate him. You want him, you want to see him gone. You want to see her with somebody better. And, y you know, because of the show being the future, we know that Sid's not very lucky in love. And by the end of issue two, uh, a, there's a big shocking reveal. And I don't want to spoil it for you. I don't want anybody in the comments to spoil it, please. Let's just say that the very last panel should have been its own great big huge splash page. But for whatever reason, whether it's the cost of printing or the pacing of the book. I don't really know how editors make these decisions, but the last panel really should have been a great big splash page, and it wasn't. So, please pick up issue number two. I highly recommend it. Uh, Felicia Day and Jim Rugg are, you know, are a great team, like I said. Can't wait to see more issues of this. Uh, you know, 
love to see how Codex is developing in the game with learning about harvesting her magical plants and all that good stuff as well. Uh, leave your feedback and comments below, and don't forget to, to check out amberonmasked.com and twitter.com slash elizabethamber. Thank you.